Good evening. Welcome to our Lent service on this beautiful, beautiful uh, evening. And uh, I welcome or thank all the people that are leading this service today, and Connie and Ken and Kathy and Judy as our uh, keyboardist. Yes. And uh, just one, a little bit of a note, the Eye of the Storm, it's a song from uh, actually one of our VBS uh, programs several years ago. And uh, the, the words will be on the TV screen. So uh, just follow along with that. And uh, it'll be on a CD. So we uh, have lots of singing. And, uh, but Connie, and uh, there's some people here that have good voices that know the song huh? and, uh, and can sing at the top of their lungs. <laughs> <laughs> Let us open our service. Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day and by night, but I find no rest. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. For he has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, and he has not hidden his face from him. God has heard Amen. and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord. We likewise confess to God that we have often spoken against him and have sinned. Holy God, we confess our sin to you. When adversity and suffering have come our way, we have complained and spoken against you. We have forgotten your many benefits and blessings to us. We have not trusted you through the hard times, but have resented you and resorted to our own strength. Forgive our iniquity and pardon our sin. Amen. 
hear the good news. God's word declares that as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. And the mercy of Almighty God, his Son Jesus Christ, was given to die for us to remove the guilt of our sin. For Christ's sake, God forgives us all our sin and gives us eternal life. And his mercy endures forever because his love for us is steadfast. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, as we continue our Lenten pilgrimage, we do so in view of your mercy. We encounter many hardships and much suffering in life. Strengthen us by your Holy Spirit so that we may trust you through the trials and take up the cross to follow you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Numbers 21, 4 through 9. From Mount Hor, they set out by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he will take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is from the epistle reading, 1 Peter 2, 21 through 25. For to you, for to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you may follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten but continued entrusting himself to him who judges, judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were strained like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to Matthew, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And when Jesus entered Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying sick with a fever. He touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she rose and began to serve him. That evening they brought to him many who were oppressed by demons, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He took our illnesses and bore our diseases. Benjamin Franklin once quipped that there were two there are two certainties we will all encounter, death and taxes. But I would add another certainty, suffering. We all face suffering in life, whether it be sooner or later. All you need to do to realize that is to watch or read the daily news. We hear terrorist attacks and threats of retaliation. Innocent people are injured and killed by artillery in war and by gunfire on the streets of our cities. Natural disasters, be they earthquakes in California 
or hurricanes on the Gulf or tornadoes in the heartland devastate property and lives. Children go hungry, the poor struggle, and justice deprives citizens of their rights and freedom. Closer to home, there is a personal evidence that suffering surrounds us. The economy goes sour and we lose employment. Families experience the turmoil of domestic conflicts and even breakups. We witness our own bodies deteriorate as we age. Disease, cancer, and injury become our uninvited companions. Lost dreams and depression plague us. Sooner or later, we all experience suffering of some kind. Suffering surrounds us all. Eventually, it afflicts us all. The existence of suffering has led many people to reject Christian faith. Famous people, famous voices as such as Pichard Russell and Steve Jobs regarded the reality of pain and sorrow to be clinching an argument against the idea of a loving God. But the Bible does not ignore the messy reality of the world. Nowhere does Christianity deny the existence of pain and suffering. Indeed, the Bible unequivocally declares that this is a fallen world, a broken planet. Especially during the season of Lent, do Christians acknowledge the reality of suffering. But Lent provides us with a new lens through which to view suffering. That is through the lens of God's mercy. In it, we see God who entered into our own suffering to bear our suffering and to bring healing to us. We will now sing the first, the first verse of the song that is printed in the bulletin and also on the screen. of suffering. Why is there suffering in the world? That's a heavy question. But the Bible says ultimately the answer is because there is sin in the world. God created the world without suffering, but humanity rebelled against God's perfect plan. Sin along with suffering was introduced. Genesis 3 describes the consequences of the human race's fall into sin. It says that at that time, suffering entered the world and thorns were introduced into our lives. So ultimately, the problem is not pain and suffering. It is not crime and illness and catastrophes that plague life. They are only symptoms of a deeper problem that has infected all humanity. That problem is sin. And each of us have been infected with it. Nevertheless, these results from a sinful and fallen world are painful. Suffering is real. In the book, Migrants, Sharecroppers, and Mountaineers, a poverty-stricken mother describes an incident in which her husband lost his temper at a preacher who was speaking on the topic of suffering in a church service. She said, Then my husband did the worst thing he could do. He took the baby, Annie, and he held her up right before the minister's face, and he screamed and he hollered at him. He told him that here is our little Annie, and she's never been to the doctor, and the child is sick, and we have no money, and not for Annie, and not for the other ones or ourselves. Then he told the reverend that he was like all the rest, making money off of us, and he held Annie, our Annie as high as he could, right near the cross and told God he'd better stop having these ministers speak for him and he should come down and see him, see us himself. This migrant father sums up the dilemma of pain and suffering about as well as it can be expressed. 
Why are there sick children? And why is there no money and little hope among so many? Perhaps you have held similar feelings as these. But there is one point in the father's tirade in which he was mistaken. He demanded that God come down and see for himself the suffering in this world. Yet God did exactly that. And not only did God see what suffering is like, he experienced it to the full. He felt what it's like. For above all people in history, Jesus Christ suffered most. We will now sing the second verse. Tell me who here had growing was there ever grief like this? Friends who fear his cost is owing, foes insulting his distress. The cure of suffering, the cross. God's own son came down to this fallen world and experienced its imperfection, its ugliness, its cruelty, its suffering. Christ was treated with more injustice than we will ever know. He was betrayed by friends and rejected by his people. He was humiliated, stripped, mocked, ridiculed, and beaten. And the cross on which he died was meant to produce supreme suffering. Nailed to the cross, his back, which was shredded from the scourging that preceded the crucifixion, scraped against the splintered lumber of the beam. Jesus' body was in continuous contorted movement as he struggled from a slow suffocation. His pain was excruciating. In fact, that is where we get the word excruciating, literally means out of a crucifixion. More than anyone else, Jesus tasted the curse that was brought about by our first parents' sin and ours. However, Jesus also brought about the reversal of that curse. The cross before which the migrant father held up his baby in the very symbol that God shared in our pain and suffering and death. Not only did he share that, Christ experienced it in our steed. We can, there, we can therefore trust the Lord through all our suffering because he endured it with us and for us. Yes, God knows what suffering, is, suffering in this world is like. Jesus is a wounded healer. Because of Christ's sacrificial suffering, we are made whole and healed from the greatest ailment, the sickness of sin. The Apostle Peter wrote in our text, He himself bore our sin in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live in righteousness. We'll continue with verse 3 in the song. He who take up sin but lightly, nor suppose the evil great, perspective on suffering, God's mercy. Because Jesus endured suffering on our behalf, we can endure as well. The text from 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 21 reminds us, For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. Entering the Christian life does not mean that suffering is automatically withdrawn from us. In fact, it may mean just the opposite, that we will experience more hostility from the world, just as Jesus did. Jesus suffered, and we are called to follow in his footsteps. 
The cross <coughs> provides us with strength to endure our sufferings because it transforms suffering. Just as God's power transformed the horrific sufferings of Jesus on the cross into the ultimate victory of God over sin and death. God's power can transform our sufferings into his means of growth and maturity for ourselves and healing and renewed life for others. Corey Ten Boom provided us with a powerful example of the transformative power of suffering in the view of God's mercy. Corey's family was persecuted by the Nazis for protecting Jews during World War II. Corey and her sister Betsy suffered incredible hardships in the concentration camp in which they were unjustly incarcerated. In the midst of all the misery, however, Betsy proclaimed a message of transformative faith. When Corey lamented about the pit of suffering that they were in, Betsy replied, there is no, there is no pit so deep that God's love is not deeper still. Betsy knew that the life is painful, but God's mercy is even more powerful. Later, Corey preached a sermon on forgiveness after she had met one of the guards of the camp who attended her service. With tears in his eyes, he expressed gratitude for her message of forgiveness, and he extended his hand out to her. When she shook it, she felt a warmth running up her arm. She was given release from her anger as she gave God's forgiveness to him. The Apostle Peter wrote about Jesus saying, by his wounds you have been healed. During this Lent and always, may we remember the horrific suffering Christ experienced on the cross for us. But may we also never forget the healing and hope that came from that sacrifice. Let us ever draw upon his healing strength that now comes to us in our suffering. Amen. Amen. Here we have a firm foundation. Here the refuge of the lost. Almighty and merciful God, we approach your throne of grace today as those who struggle with hardships and suffer with pain. When we encounter the brokenness of this world and the suffering that it brings, such as natural disasters, economic reversals, and financial losses, restore us with your healing power so that we might rest secure in you as our mighty fortress. When we experience broken relationships, and the suffering that these bring, such as estrangement of family members, alienation from friends, and conflict within congregations. Restore us with your healing power so that we might seek reconciliation and peace. When we experience broken bodies and the suffering that it brings, such as illness, injury, and disability, restore us with your healing power so that we might live in health once again. When we experience broken minds and the suffering that it brings, such as with mental illness, neurosis, and dementia, restore us with your healing power so that we might know of your love. 
when we experience broken spirits and the suffering that it brings, such as depression, despair, and desperation. Restore us with your healing power so that we might have hope. When we encounter the death of loved ones and the sorrow that it brings, restore us with your abiding comfort so that we might trust in your victory over death. When we encounter our own death and the terror that it brings, restore us with your resurrection power so that we might live eternally in your glory. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus, the suffering servant. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the merciful God, who suffered the pain of the cross for you and your salvation, strengthen you to trust him through hardship according to his good and gracious will. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. Amen.